Let's talk about faith, what it is and what it's not, and some huge misconceptions about it. Suppose that you are playing the game Liar, the card game where you're trying to get rid of cards in order to win. You lay them down, face down, and make a claim about what you're laying down. Someone can call you out and say, Liar. And if they're right, then you have to take whatever cards are in the pile to your own pile. But if you're wrong, then you get the pile yourself. Well, suppose somebody says, three sixes, and you are convinced that they're not telling the truth, but you're afraid that you might be wrong, so you don't call them out on it. You could ask the question, do you really believe that they're lying since you weren't willing to call them out? And so it is with genuine faith in Jesus Christ. It is not simply intellectual acknowledgement. It is trust that leads to action. Welcome to Truth Talk with Ed Skipper, published every Monday and Thursday at 6 a.m. Pacific time, where I take biblical truth and apply it to your daily living. Now the word, we are in Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all God's people. Your faith in Christ Jesus. The word that translates faith means to be fully persuaded of something such that you trust in it. The root word means to obey. And so we have this great misconception that you can have intellectual head knowledge, and we call that saving genuine faith. But no, it involves trust and it involves action. The New Testament speaks often of the obedience of faith. Now suppose two people were, had fallen in a stream and they were headed for a waterfall and two people on the shore throw them ropes so that they can rescue them. One of them takes the rope and is pulled safely to shore. The other one sees a log floating by and thinks, that's good, I'm going to get on this substantial log. And they get on the log and they go over the falls. One of them put their hope in, their faith in, an object that was reliable, the rope. The other did not. And so we see that here's another misconception about faith. It's not about faith itself. It's about what you're putting your faith in, the object of your faith. Now, saving faith in the Christian life involves three things. The mind, the intellect. We acknowledge that Jesus is divine, that he died for our sins on the cross, that he rose again, that he's Lord, and that he's returning. That's the intellect part, the mind, but there's also the emotions. We are sorrowful over our sin, and we are joyful over our forgiveness. And then there's the volitional or the will. We trust, making a choice to trust in Jesus alone for our salvation, and we choose to submit our life to his lordship. Faith is not, if I believe hard enough, it will happen. Suppose you are eating a steak and you are using a plastic fork and you believe with all your might that that fork is going to hold up. Well, it doesn't matter what you believe. The plastic fork probably isn't strong enough to work on a steak. So it is the object of faith that's important. It's not, it's not mind over matter, but genuine saving Christian faith is confidence that God will do exactly what he has said he will do. It's not the power of faith. It is the power of God experienced through faith by us. Is your faith in Christ genuine? Does it include trust in him that leads to action, that leads to obedience? For more on this subject about misconceptions about faith, make sure you check, check out Truth Talk episode 56, Beware of False Teachers, and the ones that follow that, the episodes following. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And until next time, may your faith be genuine, involving trust that leads to obedience to Jesus.